Today we do something I've wanted to do for a long time, a rotisserie chicken. And whether you have a rotisserie or not, I'm gonna talk you through it. This is gonna be unreal. Deli roasted chicken. You see them in the supermarket all the time. And they're delicious and they're easy and they're at the heart of many quick, simple, delicious meals. But you can make one yourself if you have a rotisserie. And if you don't have a rotisserie, that's fine because I'll help you with that part. But we're gonna assume you do, watch what happens, it's all great. But we're gonna start by building our fire with charcoal, come with me. I used to be this guy that said, I only wanna cook on a gas grill because when I wanna eat, I wanna eat now. And that meant I could turn on the grill and three seconds later, it was hot and I'd put on my protein, whatever it was. And then I had an awakening and I realized how important charcoal was to the flavor of what you were cooking. But charcoal can take a little while, unless you use one of these, a chimney. Okay, and I know mine looks like shit and it's all rusted and whatever because I leave it out, but don't worry about that. That's not important. What's important is this will help your charcoal heat in about 25-ish minutes. So think about this. You come home, you want to cook some steaks, they're in your fridge. I've told you, don't cook them cold. Take them out for at least a half an hour. You take them out of the fridge. You get the charcoal going in your chimney. And when this is ready, your steaks are ready. You get me? But charcoal is one messy proposition. Hence, the latex gloves. And we fill up our chimney. And so we take handfuls of our charcoal not charcoal briquettes, full charcoal pieces, and we fill up our chimney. By the way, I realize that by saying I'm using charcoal versus charcoal briquettes may make me sound like a bit of elitist, which I'm not. I like to use charcoal briquettes. I just don't have any. I just have whole lump charcoal. But whether they're charcoal briquettes or whole lump charcoal, you know, the barbecue guys might give me a bunch of shit. And it's starting to rain. Oh, fabulous. But both of these win out over just straight gas. They really do. Straight gas gives you heat. The charcoal gives you heat and flavor. Got it? Now we have to light them, and here's how we do this. We're gonna use these little uh, lighter cubes. So we'll put them down on here, separate them by a few inches. We will light them. And then we'll take our chimney and place it on top and call it a day. And in about 25, 30 minutes, this will be lit and ready to use. These are one of the best things ever. And apart from the fact that I've already said mine's rusty, don't worry about that. It will not hinder the heating of the charcoal. And they're like, uh, maybe 20 bucks. We'll put a link below the video. And for the critical people out there, yes, you can stuff newspaper in here instead of using those little lighter things and uh, do it just as well. I just happen to have them, I like them, and they work for me. And the only newspaper I have is electronic and I don't wanna put my laptop underneath that and start it on fire. Now, we make our brine. And we brine our chicken because it makes it uh, juicier, more moist and tender, just actually better. And brining means um, putting the chicken in a, a, a solution that's generally as simple as water, salt, and sugar for three, four, five, six hours, even to overnight. It's just better. It requires a little forethought, which generally I do not have, but in this case, I did. So let me show you how we do that. To a pot of just simmered hot water, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar three quarters of a cup of kosher salt, and three quarters of a cup of soy sauce. And we mix. Hello, come around, come around, come around, thank you. And at this point, the only goal is to dissolve the sugar and the salt. We take it off the heat, then we add enough ice to make up about a gallon of liquid. We let it cool down. Then we put our chicken in a big container, we add the liquid, and we're there.
And I had you make a gallon of liquid because if you don't have a container as snug as this, and you just had a big bowl or a big bag or something, uh, you'll need more liquid. So, but here's the thing. Now that it's made, we want it to just sit. Put it in the refrigerator, leave it for, you know, four hours, three hours. Overnight is even excellent. But after that time, you bring it out. Thank you, magic of television and me doing this earlier today. And now you've got a perfectly brined whole chicken that we're ready to deal with. So we take it out, turn it upside down because the cavity holds a lot. Let most of it drip off. And then we'll put it on paper towels and start to dry it. And you want it very dry at this point. So under the wings, the legs, in the, the gooch. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you call this part. The, the opening. <laughs> Sorry. Might have been wrong. And you can see it's taken on a little bit of the color from the soy. Not much, just a little bit. But now we truss. So here's what we want to do. When this is on the rotisserie, if the legs are like this, well, they'll burn, it won't cook properly, and they'll, you know, they'll knock into, like imagine, kink, 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 that's not good. So we want to sort of tie it up like we would if it was a, a turkey at Thanksgiving. We want to bring the legs in and the, uh, the, the arms, sorry, wings. I know it's a chicken, I know it's not a person, so. Get yourself a nice piece of twine. Cut a piece off, and we truss. So turn the kid over. I like to do a loop around each leg. Sky over here. Pull them tight. Or taut, if that's your terminology. And then do a couple knots. The second one should secure it. So that's that, cut. Now a longer piece, we'll take care of the wings, and we're golden. Look, I know there's fancy ways to do this and somebody will call me out and call me a piece of shit, and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't really care. Though I do appreciate the people that reach out and say, don't worry about them. Oh, I don't, I really don't. But the goal at this point is simple, right? I wasn't a boy scout, I don't know how to do those knots. I just do what I do and it works. So here we go. And there's our chicken. One nice tight little bundle that's ready to go on our rotisserie prongs and skewer. So here's what we do. We take our rotisserie, what's this thing called? Rod. Rod. Thank you, Jilly. We insert it into the chicken at the back or the front. I don't know what side that is. And now we take our forks like this. We unscrew so they're open. We bring one here. And we tighten up. And then the other direction we come in. And we don't want to make them too tight because we may need to adjust at the grill to make sure that uh, it, 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 it turns evenly. So let's go here, 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 in. Feels pretty even. So look, is this gonna turn? Nicely. Okay, so let's just give it a tiny splash of oil. And at this point, I'm gonna use a little sesame oil, just a bit. Just give it a quick rub. All the way around. Let's go, let's go put this kit on. Okay, so we take off the chimney. We set it down for a second. In this case, we get rid of the grill. So this comes off because we're not using it. And here's what we're using. This is a Caliber Pro Kamado. Kamado is what this egg shaped kind of charcoal grill is called. And in this case, the Caliber guys make what's called a rear blaze basket. 
So we're going to take our coals, we're going to put them in the basket, and by the way, Max, take a look in there. You see how it's been about 25 minutes and they're all basically white and ready to go. And that's where you want them. White hot, ladies and gentlemen, is what it is, and what we're using. So I'm going to dump those in. Now that they're in and ready, now we're going to add our chicken on the skewer. And that looks like this. Chicken goes in here. Motherfucker. Oh, it's fucking hot. S. Yes. Oh, that fucking thing's shut. Sucker. Oh my god. So we put the chicken and the skewer into the rotisserie. We settle it right here. Now I'm going to adjust it just a little bit. So I'm just going to loosen it up and center it a bit. Just a bit. And when it's centered to the fire, then I'll tighten it up. Turn the rotisserie on. And let her go. And by the way, the Caliber Pro Kamado is the only one that has this rotisserie in it. But if you don't have this, use your grill, use whatever. We'll talk about the oven in a sec. It's happening behind me. It's turning away. Everything's going to be fine. And I know some of you are looking at me going, great, Sam, thanks. I don't have a rotisserie. I don't have this. I don't have a grill. Out I don't have a grill. I don't have an outside. I live in an apartment. How am I supposed to do this? Well, you're supposed to do this in an oven. 350 degrees. I would say if there was a way to raise the chicken so it didn't sit right flat on the sheet pan in the oven at 350 degrees till it comes to temperature. You could use balls of tin foil. You could use uh, oranges or lemons or limes cut in half like a base. You could use a shit ton of onions. You could do anything. There's all kinds of things that you can buy that will raise. A V-rack thing will raise the chicken or the turkey or whatever it is you're cooking off the deck of the, the sheet pan to make it better for you, okay? But while this starts, we want to make a sauce for it. The first 5, 10, 15 minutes of this by itself are fine, but then we want to start basting. And here's what our sauce is going to be. We begin with hoisin sauce, about, what is that? A third of a cup. Then we add some soy sauce. Oh, by the way, if it wasn't obvious, we're doing an Asian thing. Look, the soy sauce and the brine didn't make it an Asian thing. It just added that extra little uh, something that you can't necessarily put your finger on, but not necessarily Asian in any direction. Uh, these ingredients now will make it Asian, but in a very delicious way. And if you don't like this, we've shown you the basics, how to set up your fire, how to trust the chicken, how to get on the thing. And then at that point, you can put barbecue sauce on or barbecue rub or anything you want. Greek seasonings, oregano, lemon, thyme, that, you know, garlic, that kind of thing. But this is different. I don't know that everybody will do this, and maybe that's one of the reasons, too. Let's continue. Gets a little more sesame oil, about a tablespoon. About a tablespoon of five spice powder. And by the way, uh, look, these herbs, these seasonings in these jars are expensive. If you, can, if you can find a place that sells it in bulk, instead of six or seven dollars for a jar of thyme or or rosemary or you know whatever you're using you'll pay about a buck 80 cents 90 cents in bulk don't don't buy don't buy the jars buy bulk it's way better just search online and find a place near you and by the way are the other channels giving you this kind of information to save money and make your life better in the kitchen and taste better and life better no and why is that because they care about themselves and we care about you right max right Max cares about you, I care about you. We continue, two more things. And one is sriracha, maybe a couple tablespoons. And the last one is brown sugar. I don't know what that was, a couple tablespoons maybe. And we mix. And this gorgeous paste, this deliciousness is gonna be amazing when we start painting it on that chicken. Let's go look. So here's our temp, we're just over 350, which is perfect. 
If you live between 350 and 375, 400, you're gonna be in great shape. And here's our chicken after about, what, 10 minutes maybe, Max, right? Starting to get some color. And now we're gonna help it along. We've got this gorgeous glaze right here. And we'll put on a uh, nice little layer. Oh boy. And once you've got a pretty coat on, and it is darn pretty, isn't it? The smell, OMG. Oh my God, like a 14 year old girl. Oh my God, this is insane. When you got a beautiful coat on, that's frickin' pretty, ain't it? That there's a darn pretty chicken. Let it do its thing, close her up. Our goal is about 160 degrees. I know, I know, they say 165 for chicken. But we'll pull it off at about 160 and it will finish at 165 and it won't be over dry because we do not want that. We're gonna come back every, you know, 10 minutes or so, baste a little bit. A chicken this size, this kid was about, uh, about three and a quarter pounds, maybe three and a half pounds. It's probably about an hour and 15 minutes, something like that, but we'll check. Depends on the temperature, the, how cold the chicken was when it came out, the whole thing. Good? Good. And so you want to come back every 10, 15 minutes, have a look, give it a little baste, a little baste, a little baste. The color improves, it gets gorgeous, until the point that it registers about 160 degrees, and you take it off. Look at that, 160, 159.9. Seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. Can't get much closer. Let's take this little sweetheart off. Loosen them up. And one, yikes, two, Come on, little guy. Huh. Look at that. So let's cut the strings off. Hold here. There go one. There go one more right here. Oh, do you see that? It just gave off a whole bunch of juice. And it's completely clear. This is going to be amazing. Okay, now, now we take this guy. Let's put him right here. And look, you could eat him now. I like the idea of letting him or her, honestly, I don't even know anymore with chicken, rest the bits. But let's make it prettier, shall we? While it rests, we'll give it just two things. Remember the Asian influence, so some green onion. Oh boy. And a little toasted sesame seed. Goodness gracious. That is something to behold. They could happen in your oven, on your grill with a rotisserie, on your grill without a rotisserie, on your Caliber Pro Kamado, and whatever you have. But when you view this gorgeous creation from the top, you must be happy. You've done something amazing here. I said in the beginning, you wanna make a barbecue, make a barbecue, but these Asian-inspired flavors, let's give it a little extra something special. And you might not be able to hear it, but the gardeners are coming. There they are. As if they know when I pull something off the grill. And now time for a bite. So we take our knife. Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh. Leg. A beautiful leg bite. Oh, come on. Look at, do you see the, the, the look at. Do you see this juiciness? Holy crap. It's, I can't even get it. Okay, wait, right now, quick a bite. What? Okay, here's the reason you want charcoal. Because of this flavor that you get, that smokiness. Look at that gorgeous little leg. Should we have a bite of this? Should we? I mean, why not? Do you see the steam? Ready for a bite? Oh, it's gorgeous.
Oh my God. Mm. Look. The fact that we brined it gives it that extra tender juiciness that you absolutely want. If you have time, brine your poultry, ladies and gentlemen, always. But on top of that, the, the heat from the sriracha, the, the, the little sesame oil, but the, 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 the five spice powder just takes it over. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. This is insane. I want you to do this. I really want you to do this. And if you did it in the oven, it would still be tremendous. But remember, don't, I'll yell over the gardeners. But remember, don't cook it past 160. It will get to 165 when you take it off. Holy S. Today's a good day. Thanks for hanging out with us. Max and I had a huge fight in between that nobody saw, and now we love each other again, right? Right. I'm not sure he means that. I mean it, though, because I love him. And I love you guys for being there. And by the way, just a reminder, if you hit subscribe, of course we love that, but you also have to hit, what is it? The bell. You also have to hit the notifications bell. Subscribing is great, but if you subscribe, it means you like us. Then if you like us, you want to know when, you want to know when we put out new stuff and hitting the notifications bell tells you right when it happens. Thanks for being here. See you.